This clinical practice guideline from Martin and colleagues in 2021 guides you through the assessment and interventions for chronic ankle instability. In this video, we highlight the findings from strong and moderate recommendations, which are made from level 1 and level 2 studies. Hi, and welcome to PhysioTutors. The clinical practice guideline describes several risk factors as well as diagnostic findings that should be assessed in your patient. Risk factors for chronic ankle instability include not wearing a brace, no participation in balance exercises, a poor functional performance after an acute lateral ankle sprain, participating in sport activities, and having a higher body mass index. These risk factors are modifiable and can thus be included in treatment. In addition to history taking, which shows that sprains have already been contracted in the past, the diagnosis of chronic ankle instability can be confirmed through the Cumberland Ankle Instability Tool and the identification of functional ankle instability. A score of 11 or greater on the ITFI or 25 or less on the CATE suggest that the presence of chronic ankle instability is likely. Functional performance tests, such as the Star Excursion Balance Test, Side Hop, Timed Hop, Multiple Hop Test, and the Foot Lift Test, were shown to be able to discriminate between individuals with chronic ankle instability and healthy controls. The Clinical Practice Guideline regards the following interventions as high quality. Importantly, braces to support the ankle joint cannot be used in isolation. They may only be used to assist in achieving short-term rehabilitation goals by improving the ability to engage in interventions that can promote long-term clinical benefits. Proprioceptive and neuromuscular therapeutic exercise to improve dynamic postural stability and patient-perceived stability during functional activities should be the focus of rehabilitation. Clinicians should use manual therapy procedures such as graded joint mobilizations, manipulations, and non-weight-bearing and weight-bearing mobilization with movements. The aim is to improve weight-bearing ankle dorsi flexion and dynamic balance in the short term for individuals with chronic ankle instability. Ideally, manual therapy supplements balance training. Return to sedentary work should occur from two to six weeks following the ankle sprain and after six to eight weeks for more physically demanding occupations. The following figure can guide your clinical decision making. To conclude, managing chronic ankle instability can be difficult, but this clinical practice guideline can guide you in the right direction. Most importantly, do not forget to load the ankle and train proprioception and balance in individuals with chronic ankle instability. Ankle instability is frequently encountered in the running population. We have built an online course on running rehab together with Benoit Matthew that you can check out at the link in the video description below. All right, thank you very much for watching. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. You can watch a video review of the recommendations for acute lateral ankle sprains by clicking on the video right next to me. Check out our website for more physiotherapy related content. This was Ellen for PhysioTutors. I will see you in another video. Bye.